Central United States have come from. I think almost every one of them outside of maybe eight or ten have come from this Morovian bloodline. And they're all related. I mean, if you look at the, I put a link on my website uh, from the Hard Truth site about the Illuminati and the Masonry and the, and the United States presidents. You can go through and read that stuff about all of our presidents and how they're all related. Uh, it's, it's because this hybrid line believes it's their, their right to rule over everybody else. And so that's what we're dealing with in the last days. It hasn't changed. It was the same before. It's the same now. It hasn't changed in between. Uh, it's just that our eyes are getting more open now as to what's going on. Jesus said, if you want to know what's going to happen in the end, then you need to know the beginning. You know, if you want to know what's going to happen in the last days, know what happened in the beginning days. Uh, because he said it was going to be as in the days of Noah. And that's what we have today. Today is the days of Noah. Uh, but people don't recognize, uh, you know, things that are going on. Uh, they live in, you know, fantasy land where America is a nation built under God and we have apple pie, apple pie Chevrolets and baseball and they don't understand the pure satanic forces in, in working in America today. They don't understand that America was based uh, by these Morovian leaders, uh, these, this Masonic and this, this satanic serpent seed line uh, that our country was based on and that they've always controlled it from, the, the, from its inception. Uh, yeah, they, 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 you know, the people who came over here, like my grandfather, my ancient grandfather, uh, Daniel Boone, people who wanted to come over here from Europe and get away from the slavery uh, of, the, you know, the government in Europe, and wanted freedom of religion. But that was also our destruction as well, folks. You know, if we were going to have a nation built under God, it should have been kept there. Instead, we became a melting pot for every idol and every wicked cult and satanic group uh, imaginable, every idol imaginable. It was the same trap Solomon fell into uh, by being married to over 500, 1,000 women. You know, he had over 1,000 wives, and that was his problem was that he got he got swung in the trap of, of all these different women that introduced him to all these different idols. And that's what happened with America. We, we strayed from God being one nation under God uh, to being one nation for the melting pot of every idol and demon out there. You know, now we have, you know, every religion you can imagine here in America. And that's where we went wrong. People can think freedom of religion was, you know, we were the only nation that offered that. But it was also our downfall, folks, because look what, look, look what it did to us. You know, look at our country now. Where are we now that we allow people to come in and worship idols in our nation under God and wonder why he hasn't judged our nation and wonder why Satan hasn't had such wide open access into our country because we've opened it up for every vile demon and idol out there. You know, and we only get what's coming because we deserve it, you know. I mean, face it, we're a judgment right for, we're a nation right for judgment. And, yeah, we can go on and on and, and the, the abortions, the killing of millions every year uh, and, and not doing a thing about it and, you know, electing leaders in that lie that tell you that, 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 that they're Christians and that they're from the Christian right, and then they, they lead you to the pit of hell. It's the same thing Hitler did. You know, and what we're seeing now is the Amalekites in power again. And these are the same people that Queen Esther fought. Look back in the, in the book of Esther, you, you read about King Haman and his sons that had come against uh, the Jews, and they beat them. And, you know, it was the same ones as Amalekites. It's the Nazis. It's the same ones. And we're dealing with them today. They're, they're back in power. Yeah, it's the same thing over all over again. Uh, and that's the ones that, are, that are, have led this country to the pit of hell, folks. And so you can't really point any one thing other than the fact that as a nation we turned our backs on God. And we did it through many different ways by allowing idols into our nation, uh, perversions into our nation, and, you know, there's a separation of, of government and politics, and, and now, you know, they want to be a part of religion because, you know, the leader of Babylon is going to demand to be worshipped as God. And so they have to have a part of religion and involved with them now. And everything they do is a double, double-edged double sword. I mean, I, back in, uh, when the Minutemen were in Arizona fighting for our government to do something about closing the borders, 
and I almost I, I almost went to the website to sign the petition about closing the borders, and, I, and, and it just stopped me. I was stopped, and and the thought came to me that it, you know if, if we keep fighting for our government to close these borders and do something official, like build a 50 foot wall around the border so aliens can't get in, illegal aliens as being Mexicans, then the people can't get out either. We can't get out of our own country when they declare martial law. You know, and, and when they start coming uh, for Christians and patriots for persecution to kill them. We won't even be able to get out of our own country if we do that. You know, protecting our borders to keep alien, illegal aliens as being Mexicans and others out of our country uh, also keeps us from leaving our own country. So it's a two-edged sword. It's a two-edged sword. Give me a call, folks, 260-356-2611. Now it's been a quiet, quiet night. You spoke uh, too soon. What's that? You spoke too soon. You got to call her. Okay. You're up, call her. Hey, Sherry. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Just when you say a quiet night, you get a call, huh? No, oh, yeah. <laughs> I do that more often. This is Daryl. Hey, Daryl. How come I'm hearing you talk right now, and uh, and it's not me and you talking? It's what? <laughs> is there, how much? Is there, how much of the delay is there? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, maybe a minute or so, I don't know. On the Internet, it depends on what stream you are. One one stream has probably got about a minute delay, and the other one could have up to about three minutes delay. Oh, wow. So you've got to make okay. sure you turn the computer off in the background of your speakers. It'll kill you. Okay, well, I'll turn the speakers off. Does that work? There we go. Anyway, how are you doing, Sherry? I'm doing good. To talk. I'm doing real good. How are you doing? Good. Glad to hear it. I'm doing okay. Um, did you tell me the, the book of Esther was written by Paul, right? Back of Esther written by Paul? I'm sorry, not the book. <laughs> uh, Ephesians. Ephesians, yeah. Right. Um, didn't don't you quote that that scripture that uh, where it says in the last days will be in the day same as what they were in the days of Noah? So does Matthew. Jesus says that himself. Okay, so it's quoted in Matthew also. Yeah. Okay, obviously I'm lacking. <laughs> um, I did not know that, and I, I'm curious the the mark of the beast do uh, where it says. Uh, in the head or on the hand? Yeah. Um, what do you, how do you interpret that? I take it literal. Do you? I mean, there's a lot of people that don't. I posted a, a, an article on my website. This book this guy wrote about it is the mark of the beast accepting the Sabbath, the Sunday law coming. Uh-huh. Being the mark of the beast that if you start worshiping on this, this, this is going to be an, an enforced Sunday worship law coming that just as everybody has to observe Sabbath on the Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And, of course, the churches will think that's great, but what they're doing is prohibiting Sab Saturday Sabbath worshipers from, pro from uh, celebrating Sabbath on Saturday. Mm. And so what it's going to do is lead to persecution to anybody who doesn't worship on Sun God Day. But how is, I mean, that, how, how, that's not even deceptive. If we take it literally, as soon as someone's expected to take a mark, I mean... Yeah, well, you know what? That's why I, I say to, to just look at all different views and interpretations. Right. And don't hang your head on any of them. Right. So yeah. whatever comes, you can recognize. My, 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 I get a feeling, and I, I understand. I've, been, I've thought about the mark uh, all my life. Even when I was biblically illiterate, I would think about, you know, I ain't taking no mark, you know, something like that. And yeah. Then, now, now that I'm older and I've done some more due diligence, and having listened to many different teachers, uh, preachers, uh, like yourself and many others, um, I, I get a feeling that it, the basic, the deception that, that, that you're, that you trying to get people to wake up about is the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is deception. 